Yeah, hey, thanks very much, Phil. Welcome, uh, everybody, and uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your Wednesday. Uh, busy, busy week as moving season comes down, and a lot of us were at the National SSA Conference. Uh, much, much to do. Uh, we thought this was going to be a relevant topic for us to talk about today because uh, we're not only software people, but uh, our guest, Phil Murphy, is an owner and operator who's going to actually discuss uh, some of his choices around how he handled the call center decision. Uh, and We'll come to him later. Um, but we wanted to talk real quickly about what sort of technology is available today to give us options that we didn't have even three or even four years ago. Uh, other industries are doing this, and so we want to make sure we keep the storage industry up, up to speed. Let's just start just real generally at, at reviewing real quickly why it was that, that we thought we needed call centers uh, in the first place. Um, you know, obviously, there's going to be times where you know, our stores are closed, and so for after hours purposes, we didn't want to miss that call that came in. Um, that's a real obvious one, but sometimes during busy, busy season, or especially on a Saturday, you know that a lot of us are, are going to have the calls go to voicemail. And sometimes when we've got a lead that's calling in, putting them into a voicemail system is, is a surefire recipe to lose that lead to our competitors up the street. So we want to make sure that we capture those missed calls, and some of us even, even got a little sophisticated and had calls start to roll over uh, to the next property. Um, it's a short, good solution, uh, but there's more options available. Um, we all know that leads are really valuable. Uh, next to property taxes, real estate taxes, marketing and advertising for leads is probably our third or maybe fourth biggest expense. But, but using call centers, we know, is, is just a better tool than voicemail. However, by outsourcing and giving over the responsibility to some other company, we've had sacrifices that have, that have been made. And, and some of those after use in using a third-party call center is that we notice that not every call is a good call. Occasionally, uh, there may be an inconsistency in what's said. The overall mood and brand uh, of the call sort of fades around, and, and, and we lose control of the calls. We sometimes uh, have people that are in an IVR system for a minute or more if the call center is busy. And there's a thing called abandonment that means people get impatient and they hang up if they're waiting too long. Simple as that. You know, and when we do get a hold of people at the call center, sometimes what is said or how that customer is engaged can, can be inconsistent. And we sometimes miss out on some of the key questions that we like to ask about people storing, such as, when do you need it? Tell me about how important. Uh, the material is? Do you need some climate control? Do you even know what you need? We don't always get that. So the other thing too that we cover is that a personal touch is kind of lost when we've got somebody at a remote location who doesn't know our stores, um, can't communicate and just speak with somebody as if they're a hometown person. Uh, that personal touch goes a very, very long way in keeping a good interaction. And, and it also holds true with differentiators. Uh, a differentiator might be somebody savvy enough at storage property A to know that the competitor down the street at storage property B might have a lower price, but they're also going to ding you with rent increases every three months. So those differentiators are the unique knowledge of somebody in storage at the property site. Um, not everybody is trained and has the same skill at a call center because a lot of times there are brand new employees, um, and it's not their fault. Um, a lot of call centers have a regular churn uh, in a telemarketing or a call center environment. Sometimes employees only last between six and nine months on average. So even though you know this is happening, there are some inconsistencies that we see about them knowing about prop the property itself and the fact that it's easier to get to than the one down the street. And again, it's, it's just not their fault. They're operating in a very large, highly scaled environment. And sometimes we lose and we sacrifice that personal touch. So sometimes owners have said, well, is this all there is? Is this the only option? You know, if only there were some way to sort of take what is good about uh, my handling of calls and do something with it with technology, because I know how my employees sell. And they sell the way that I want them to sell my brand. They understand some of our differentiators. They know our brand. They know about how well we service our tenants, 
and a call center may not be able to convey that. They know our locations best and can mentally flip around between one or the other if we can't serve somebody immediately. That first-hand knowledge is key, and you have a better quality discussion overall. When there's a sale at stake, engaging and having long conversations with somebody who's very familiar with the property, huge benefit, big benefit. But even if somebody doesn't rent, one of the other keys is that I can now have my manager follow up on that lead so that we can grab that customer from going up and down the street to a competitor and work that lead, even though they didn't rent from us right away. Managers on, on site can do it, and also managers on site can issue, can issue problems and correct problems a little better because they're on site. Locks can, and access can get restored. Things can be done, dealt with on the first call. So when you know we, we have the owners and operators who came to us, the ideal size for somebody who could actually kind of build an internal model is generally anybody with about four properties on up to hundreds of properties at a time. So is there a better way? Are there models that can take place that'll kind of get us back in control? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, and we can tell you a little bit about what's happened way further than call forwarding ever did to the properties. There's a traditional call center environment. We all know that one, right? The call comes in, it goes to one place, and every single sales issue or service issue or even a collection issue gets dealt with outside of the property. Now, in things like skills-based routing that our guest Phil Murphy will explain, there's actually ways to move calls around. So in another kind of a flow, now there's the ability to make sure that that main body captures all of the calls, but if they're busy, we don't want to lose that call, and so the overflow will automatically spill over to the stores that somebody designates who, who may not be as busy. So there's ways to do this with technology. Um, we're going to actually talk about um, a particular case study of, of a variation of those models. Um, Phil Murphy is going to be joining us from Nextdoor Storage, and he's going to talk about his stores and how he was able to modify and take technology so that his stores could act as agents and some really important statistics. So I'm going to go ahead, um, we're going to turn over controls to Phil, um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how he's doing things with an internal call center model and why he made the switch. Phil? Great, thanks, Ken. Um, so yeah, basically what we ended up doing is we were looking at it, like Ken had talked about, uh, you know, we, we had tried you know, really all of the major call centers that were out there and, and it was very difficult to figure out, to find a way for someone to answer the calls the way I wanted them to be answered. You know, I always felt my managers were the best people, the most prepared to answer those calls. And so what I ended up doing, uh, I've got 14 stores uh, across the Chicagoland area and I ended up kind of adopting a uh, uh, decentralized model. And, and what that was is I took my 14 stores and I identified three that were the slower stores, the one that didn't get quite as much traffic, and but also had very good managers on answering the phones. And so I ended up organizing it. So rather than going out in that traditional, what we always think of call center model, where I've got a bunch of people in kiosks sitting in the back room answering the calls, I was able to, to use my experienced managers to answer the calls without having to add that high overhead uh, that you normally find in a, in a 50, 60, 100 plus location uh, call center setup. Um, so what I ended up doing was I still set my stores as being my first line of defense in terms of answering those calls, but I also used some of the tools that were in call potential to make sure that the right people were going to the right place and that in the end, uh, those managers were able to act as my call center. Now, one of the things that I, I had found when I was doing this was that uh, you know, a concern that I think a lot of people have uh, when they're when they're going out deciding, you know, am I going to to be my own call center? Was well, what about all those calls? And and you know, that's something that a lot of the call centers talk to speak to is, well, what happens if someone calls me at two o'clock in the morning? And you know, I tend to be a little bit of a data uh, analysis type of person. So what I did is I, I went through and looked at my all my calls over the past three years, and analyzed when were those calls really coming in. And what I actually found was eighty seven percent of the calls that were coming into my property and into my properties were coming in in the hour before we were open and the hour after we were open. And so, you know, of course at that point I'm, uh, you know, I have a decision to make of how am I going to best address this and, and what I was able to do was do a very simple uh, store hour shift. 
And what that allowed me to do is I took one of my three properties that was going to be acting as an agent and I moved its opening hour, opening time up one hour. So that got us coverage in that first hour. And I took one of my other stores and I moved it back an hour. And so rather than a nine to six uh, in my stores, I was looking at an eight to five and one and I was looking at a 10 to seven in another. And that basically gave me the ability to capture 87% of my calls that were coming in. Now granted at two in the morning, uh, if, if someone isn't uh, you know, coming in trying to rent a, to a unit, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that. Uh, but what I do at that point is I direct them into my website where they're also able to, to, uh, to, to rent units and they're also able to, to, to process a lot of those things. So it's a matter of using the technology we have to, to accomplish that. So, Phil, just to clarify, when you say you had somebody working an hour before you opened, an hour after you closed, did, did you do that at every store or did that one person cover it for all your other stores? So this was only in those call centers. So basically what I was using, I was using my existing store managers as the agents. And what that allowed me to do was for the same, same payroll load that I had, I was able to get that total coverage across it, and, you know, and I and I know there are some some customers of Call Potentials Call Center that have call have stores on multiple coasts, and so they're able to accomplish that same thing without having to shift hours, just due to the advantages of time zone uh, that's out there. Now, as far as the way I use the call center, um, you know, the nice thing with Call Potential is it, it brings a lot of that information right to my my uh, my managers. Uh, screen. So no matter what location that call is coming in for, they can enter leads, they can update leads, they can take payments, they can enter notes that are going to go directly into, into our management software. And, and it really gives them that entire feel as if they're in the store without having to physically be in the store. Okay, well, um, I think it's probably a good time to explain a little bit more about what you're talking about because uh, I think visually it might be best. Um, why don't we go ahead and, and, and show the folks uh, what happens if, if we pretend that we're a call, an agent, a manager on one of the properties and somebody calls in looking for storage. Um, we've got uh, Wendy, uh, Wendy Perkins on the line and uh, I think what we're going to do is just turn it on over, Phil. Yeah, uh, you know, Ken had asked me to kind of show how we go about doing things and uh, um, I did a little background noise there. Um, uh, so, so uh, you know, what Ken did ask, we, we're going to do is walk you through, you know, how does this work? You know, when a call comes in, how do we use the call potential system to, to be able to to have this? And so, so Wendy, uh, we kind of sought out a volunteer ahead of time. So I'm going to have Wendy place a call in here, and she's going to simulate this a person calling me. So Wendy, I'm going to give you a phone number. Are, are are you on the line? Yes. Okay, great. So if you can go ahead and dial 309-760. 0193. Okay. Okay. So what can, what 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 Wendy's going to be doing here is she's going to be placing a a phone call into our call center, and what we're going to see is this call's coming in. You know, I can see it's Wendy Perkins. I can see the phone number she's calling from. Uh, you know, I can even see the ad name. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this. And the nice thing here is, is for my own stores, I didn't have to go out and buy an expensive VoIP system. I didn't have to go out and, uh, you know, really do anything different with our with our call center. Or sorry, with our with our phone systems. Instead, I'm actually able to use the the, the phones we already have in, in in order to do this. So, what you're going to see here is this is what came up. I can I'm able to answer the call. I can see hello and thank you for calling Uptown Storage. How can I help you? And I can see here that Wendy hasn't placed a call previously uh, with us. And so at that point, I can go in and I can see she's calling from Uptown Storage. It's a new or existing lead. So Wendy, I, I'm going to go ahead and ask you how much is it? You know, you're going to ask me how much it is for a 10 by 10. And yeah, you know, I'm going to be able to click on new, new or existing lead. That's going to take me into my entire script uh, that's going on. And so I'm able to, to, you know, within Nextdoor Storage, I can customize this by location, by by region, by company. I I have complete control over what's said. Uh, for, for my particular store. So can you give me an idea what you're looking to store or what the specials are? And I'm going through my process here and I see, uh, you know, I've got Wendy. Maybe I didn't get her first name. I've got her phone number. The nice thing is at the same time that I've got all of the script information, I've also got all of my unit availability. And this is being pulled directly out of my management software. So for instance, I can see here that I, I've got, a, you know, a, a quite a few 10 by 10s. I can select what I'm talking about, you know, 
I happen to have my specials that are being loaded out of my management software as well. I've got my dollar move-in special. But the nice thing is, as I'm going through, I can figure out, well, you know, I need to give Wendy directions on, on how to get in here. She's decided she's going to go ahead and, and make her way in here. And so what I'm able to do is I can go ahead and click on send directions. And then Wendy, if, if you, call, you, you called from a cell phone there, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send you a text message. So did, did you end up just getting a text message on your, on your phone? Yes, I did. It says, please click the link for directions to Uptown Storage. And it gives me the link right in my text. Okay, great. Now, the, the thing is, is on that, uh, if you tap that link, what it's going to do is it's actually, you know, rather than having this confusing turn left at, the, uh, at the, uh, uh, the, the, the third, at the McDonald's and right at this, uh, what that's going to do is that's actually going to launch Wendy's uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps or you know, whatever mapping program she happens to have, and it's going to give her turn-by-turn -turn directions and, and guide her right into that store. Um, so, you know, as we're going through the process, I'm able to, to give other information that's automatically loaded, uh, you know, what kind of vials we have, what kind of, uh, do we have climate control, what kind of specials are we running and explaining that. So my managers don't have to be completely familiar with, with what's going on at the facility. Now, I'm going to go here, and I've, I've, we've already done our 10 by 10, uh, which quarter to $75. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save that lead. So the nice thing is, is when I save that lead, this is automatically transmitted directly into our management software. So the other aspect of it is this pulls in some of the integration that we have in our follow-up engine and our lead management, mod, lead management aspects. And so, Wendy, I, have, I had you set up for an automatic uh, a text message summary because at the end of the call I asked you, hey, Wendy, do you mind if I send you a, a, a text summary of, uh, of our quote? So, Wendy, did you end up getting another text message? Yes, I did. I got a message that says, here's your storage quote from Nextdoor Storage Uptown. And it gives me the size, the price, my move-in special, and a contact number to call back at to reserve. Okay, great. Because the nice thing in there is, is we're big believers in follow-up. And, and if, if you've seen some of our other presentations we've done, we've found that uh, you know, while a lot of us require follow-ups, about 93% of, of leads don't get followed up with. And by giving that instant follow-up, that, that, that you know, at her fingertips follow-up, what that's allowed us at Nextdoor Storage to do is after she's done hunting and she's called three, four, five, ten locations, we're the only one that's in her phone. We're the one that she's going to just tap that number, call us back and say, yeah, I'm sick of hunting. Where can I come to rent that 10 by 10? So, so Wendy, actually, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and, uh, and, and tapping, oh, and actually, I'm going to hang up, the, I forgot to hang up the call here. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and, and uh, tapping that number, uh, to, to go ahead and call back in. Now this is where some of that power comes in as well. So in the past when a call center in the past when a call center is, uh, has, is dealing with calls, what they're really doing is every time a call comes in they have to create, create a new lead. And so they end up creating duplicates. And so you may end up with a lead that came in through Sparefoot uh, or you may, may have you may have had a lead that came in through uh, your website, or you may have had a uh, a call a lead that came in through your call center uh, previously. Okay, so so here's a call. Here's Wendy calling in right now, and we can see she's a lead. Uh, we can see all the information about Wendy, and, and the nice thing is, is when this lead is getting updated, what we're going to see in here is, is I can see she came, where she came in from. You know, I can see she came in. She was a lead. I can see she already had a 10 by 10, what her price was, what specials were quoted. I can actually already see that we sent her a follow-up text message. I can see all the calls that came in before. And when I come in here, I can see all the information that we had filled out previously, as well as a accessing recordings of all the calls and, and information that, uh, that may have gone out to her previously. Okay? So, so that kind of, you know, is a quick walkthrough of, of how that call center's, yeah, you can go ahead and hang up your, the phone too. But th that's kind of a quick, quick walkthrough of how we're using the call center to, to handle leads and to, to handle some of those things. But at the same time, if Wendy was, was calling and, and, I wanted, and she actually wanted to make a payment or she was an existing customer, what I'm able to do is I can click on here an existing customer. And you know, she doesn't happen to be an existing customer, but I can go ahead and look her up. And let's just find a customer to pretend to be. And I'm going to just go with Jason here, it looks like. And what you're going to notice is, is Jason We've got his entire account history. I can see when he moved in. I can see his last payment date. Uh, I can see he's got a balance of $5,400. You know, obviously, uh, hopefully, he's paying a little bit, uh, bit more than you know, more often than that. But I can also see all of his notes 
pulled directly out of the management software. So this again allows my manager to to handle that customer without having to go and open up multiple management softwares or or or, or log into something else. I can even go about entering a payment. I can even go about signing them up for auto pay to 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 make sure that that's taking place. So and that's that's kind of you know the way we're using it. Can I, I don't know if there's some other aspect you wanted me to to go over there with that. Well, one of the things that was um, uh, that that caught it, uh, the attention of some people at the most recent conference was that leads that don't initially rent get followed up on. Um, what sort of statistics did you track on that? Can you talk to us about the extra rentals, if any, that are coming from follow up on leads? Yeah, we we actually found that you know by the leads that are by the calls that were coming in by properly handling them, we were we were ending up with more calls and more leads getting captured per month per store than we did with a, when we were using a third party call center previously. Um, what that allowed us to do is, is there were a lot of calls where we had a fairly high abandonment rate which we didn't even realize was taking place. They were kind of getting lost in the IVRs, they were kind of getting lost in the the options and so uh, you know that's that's actually a, you know something that really worked out for us was not only capturing more but then also following up with them what we're able to do is, is we're able to follow up with every lead. So you'll see these buttons up at the top here. So if I want to do a follow-up call, or I want to do a, send an email, or I want to send a text message uh, that to a to a particular customer, I can go out here, and, and I can send that follow-up uh, directly to them. And so that that just gives me a lot more uh, more control over over what I was doing, and and that actually resulted, and we saw you know an increase, a pretty significant increase, about you know a little under thirty percent increase in in rental conversions uh, of the leads that were that were co coming in for us. One of the things that um, that I, I brought back from the uh, from the inside sales business and, and, and the other uh, businesses out there is something called skills based routing. Um, and that means that you want your quarterback throwing the ball and you want your you don't want your kicker blocking. Can you explain what that means in this system? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, that was actually one of the, the 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 great pieces we did because you know right now uh, as owners we're kind of left with this AT and T forwarding of every call that comes in goes to the call center, and you know a lot of those calls we really don't want to go to the call center. You know, really all the third party call centers they're they're left with AT and T to forward it or or whoever your phone provider is, and you know it's not their fault. That's where that's where basically they get that handoff. But what we did is we decided you know what. The only calls I really want to go to that go to my internal call center are going to be leads and, and and potential customers, and so we ended up using something called a smart route, and so what that allows us to do is every call that comes into call potential, it's automatically checking to see you know what kind of person that is, and so my leads are going to my lead specialist, my delinquent customers I'm being I'm able to send into a payment module, so they're dealing with a payment IVR uh, before they come to an to a, a uh, uh, a customer to to one of my uh, my agents, and then for for those people if we're closed, you know maybe they're going to voicemail for current customers. You know it allows us to decide for every call in every location who's going to be the best person to answer the call, and 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 how do we want to handle that. And and, and actually one qu one quick thing I wanted to clarify too is a lot of people always ask us, uh, you know, well, can I use this in conjunction with? Uh, you know, third-party call centers or things like that. This isn't a mutually exclusive aspect. You can turn to a third-party call center and have, you know, even those calls that don't get answered, you're still able to use them as a stopgap. It isn't a all-or-nothing decision where you've got to go all internal, you've got to go all external. This allows us to have kind of the best of both worlds where we're only using the external call center on those things that are absolutely necessary to have them. Okay, thanks for that. And it looks like there are a few questions that uh, Phil Ross is getting uh, piled up in the queue. Um, the one thing that I will add uh, to Phil's point is that um, the American Telemarketing Association keeps all kinds of statistics, and that is that if somebody is uh, calling and going through an IVR, uh, at a 60-second wait point, there is an abandonment rate of 22%. So what does that mean? That means that by being able to route the right kind of caller to the right kind of person to handle them without having to go through phone trees, um, clients will report more leads. And what's really happening is you're not getting more leads. What's happening is fewer people are hanging up because of the ability to route that call instantly. So um, I think at this point what we might want to do is turn it over to questions. Uh, Phil, we had a couple in the queue. Do you want to maybe round those up and organize them for us? 
I will. Yeah, that was a great demo, by the way. Um, we'll we'll move into the questions and answers. Uh, some of those have been answered already. Um, let's see. Do you track what percentage of those after our calls were leads? That's something you track. Yeah, so you know, you're in terms of that 87%. Uh, what we actually found is that, that almost all of the leads that were coming in were coming in, you know, in that in that hour, uh, more so after than before. Uh, but uh, but yes, you know, what what we found is is a, a large number are coming in during the day, and and that's where you know even the call centers and you, you, there's been some various white papers and red papers, uh, you know, uh, released on this talking about call volume coming through things, and and most are coming through during hours. So that really allowed us to catch them. There are you know, quite a few less that come in in that after hours setting. And once you get past uh, you know, a couple hours after closing, they're so far and few between that, uh, that they become you know, not a, you know, almost not impactful. OK. Um, is it possible to still fall over to a call center by using this model? I think you touched on that a little bit. Yeah, this this is Ken Phil. That, um, yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, in fact, some people will say, "Well, I, I don't want to have to pay for the call center uh, until it's the absolute uh, course of last last resort." So, uh, let me just take all my lead calls and all my payments and collections because those are high dollar value calls and keep those internally. And if it's an existing tenant, I just want to send it off to my call center. Uh, and there's technology out there that will do it. And of course, Call Potential does as well. Okay. Um, is there what's the the setup for implementing the skills based routing? Is that that has to be done internally, or how does the, what's the setup for that? So I actually done a good job of making sure this is very very easy to do. It's it's basically if you know how to drag and drop, you know how to build a call route, and so what it allows us to do, you know, in our ours, we can sit there and just basically drag different connections in like you can see on the screen here it's not something where it's meant to be hard to do because you know and and what what a call potential will sit down and actually walk you through the entire process and do it for you uh, the tools there for those who t tend to be the technology heads the the, the people who want to have control themselves but uh, for those that, that aren't uh, Call Potential is able to actually build that route for you and make recommendations on kind of the best way you want to have handle it. Okay. And a sort of a follow-up, if we're going to use this type of a, a system, do I have to allow my locations to take the calls, or could that be something that maybe a call center does, or does that defeat the purpose of using this system? Well, the answer the answer to that is yes. Uh, there's yes and, as, and no. Is you can have it set up however you want. Um, Phil gave the example of you know 14 stores, uh, but we don't want 14 stores taking calls. We want to focus calls into only three um, of the stores. And at one store, we've got somebody who's a real like a sales whiz, and the other person at another store is really good at collections, and the other one's just really good at, at general customer service. So in that case, they're having only three stores involved. Uh, but if somebody really wanted to make sure that every lead call was was captured, uh, you could, in theory, have the phone ringing at all of the stores simultaneously with these screen pops that we showed you, until somebody picks up. And and that's one of the things to clarify there. Uh, you know, you're able to decide not only what when calls go, but also what type of calls. So what you'll see here, this right here is our third-party call center calls. So the only people that are eligible to go there are lead calls that don't get answered by our internal call center have the ability to roll there. Delinquent customers, current customers, you know, people like that, they're, they're ineligible mm -hmm. to roll to a, uh, a third-party call center, which, which helps you control costs if you decide you need that third-party call center to, to backstop. But you know, most of our clients actually find that there's so few calls ever make it to a third-party call center, it becomes something that, that ends up being basically unnecessary. Okay. Uh, looks like we're heading towards the end of our session. Final uh, question would be, what about the phone system? Is it do I have to get a special phone system to implement this? A uh, short answer to that is no, uh, because of the cloud and what hosted uh, software provides. Uh, any phone configuration that renders a dial tone 
um, is able to be used. Uh, it's hosted technology that people subscribe to so that they don't have to buy new phone equipment. They don't have to invest in upgrades or seat licenses or, or any sort of phone system. They can just use the one they have today. Right. Yeah, well, there are customers, whether, whether you have a cell phone, a, a normal copper line from AT&T or, or an expensive VoIP system, and then we actually have customers that, that do not have any of those. And, and what they actually do is they use uh, something that's basically VoIP 2.0 uh, that's built into, uh, into your computer to, to answer those calls, which basically eliminates the, the cost of hardware. You know, when we did that, it cost us $30 to buy a headset on Amazon, and that was all we needed to get up and running. Great. Okay. Uh, do you want to put up your contact information or just uh, go over it? So I just, uh, I think you should, do you see it on there now? But uh, I've got yep. our contact information up and and uh, more than happy to answer any questions that people may have otherwise. Feel free to email us or, or give us a call anytime. Excellent. Thank you both. Thank you, Ken and Phil and Wendy for participating in that demo. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you everyone who joined us today for the webinar, being storage facility owners and managers ourselves, we utilize Call Potential's products and services at our facilities as well. If you'd like more information about this webinar or upcoming events, you can visit us at www.thesboa.com. Thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone.